Good evening. Right now, there is so much going on in the Las Vegas poker world, it would be easy to miss something. That's why we've gathered everything up here on Poker Tonight for you. The Bellagio Cup 3 Tournament Series is starting a new event every day, and as usual, I went down there earlier to the Fontana Lounge to gather all the details. Welcome back to the Fontana Lounge for your nightly Bellagio Cup 3 Tournament Series updates. Right now, the final table of event number 12's $5,000 buy-in is playing out. It started five-handed since there were only 40 entrants. They played down all the way to the money last night. With the elimination of Alexander Yuskov by the chip leader, John Smith, they are now four-handed buying for that first place prize of $119,000. The event that started today was another $5,000 No Limit Hold'em tournament. 39 players showed up and generated a prize pool of $195,000. Now they will play through the night until they get five players, which will all be in the money. Now be sure to check up with Card Player TV for your Bellagio Cup 3 update. Thanks for the update, Christy. No problem, Lizzie. And now to the tournaments at the Rio. At the World Series, Kieran O'Leary is currently the biggest money winner. Since June 1st, when the WCP started, he's won three quarters of a million dollars. Now, it's no surprise that Kieran O'Leary is the biggest money winner. He won the biggest non-main event tournament in history. Now, the person who has won the second largest sum since the 38th annual World Series of Poker began is Phil Helmuth Jr., not to mention winning his 11th bracelet. <laughs> we'll definitely let you guys know if anybody breaks Helmuth's record for most caches to date. And as an interesting side note, the most successful married couple is Harry and Jerry Thomas. They have 41 caches between them and each hold a WSOP bracelet. That's pretty impressive. I guess the couple that plays together stays together. I'm sure lots of couples played together today at <laughs> noon in the $1,500 buying No Limit event. It was, only, it was the only bracelet event to begin today because at 5 o'clock there was another satellite into the $50,000 horse event which begins tomorrow. Big names near the top of the $1,500 No Limit field right now include Men the Master Wen, Marcel Lusk, Alex Jacob, and Kathy Lieber. Michael the Grinder Mizraki, Antonio Esfandiari, Phil Helmuth Jr., and Mark Safe have already been eliminated from the $1,500 event that began today. Now that $1,500 event attracted a very large field. You know, a lot of amateurs were in that field, but the $50,000 horse event that starts tomorrow will likely attract a more condensed field of poker pros. Steve Zolotal stopped by the studios earlier today to talk to Lizzie about the $50,000 horse event and how the World Series of Poker has changed in the last 10 years. So tomorrow is the $50,000 horse event. Are you going to be playing in that? I'm going to play in that. That's a very exciting one. If, you know, to some extent there's been dilution of the prestige of the different bracelets with so many bracelets with going so on. So many players and, and so many, many events. Players. And, Certainly some good players have won events. Yeah. I mean, you know, Alan Cunningham won one, and Jeff Sandro won Wait, one. So Another Mark bracelet. And, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, it's not... The good players do get there, but also some people... But there's been 30 bracelets awarded already. You know, we just named three people. Right. There may or may not be good players, but there are unknown players, or quasi-unknown yes. players. The, um, the horse event raises the, horse the event, standards. The, some of the big Omaha events, the big horse event, all of the ones where the cream should come to the top, that, you know, the better players, and there's the final also, deuce to seven. Yeah, the championship. Nolan Matra, the, yeah. the, the deuce to seven tournament. So there are th three or four tournaments that will have much tougher fields, much more good players, and, uh, and I would say are more prestigious to win. Do you think that the final table of the $50,000 event will again be basically a solid table of pros? I would think almost absolutely. Yeah. Even maybe even more so this year than last year because the structure is a little different this year. So. Well, but on the other hand, you know, when you have a field which is let's say 80% pros versus these big tournaments where it's 10% pros. That's true. You know, you you rate to have a lot more. Take us back 10 years to 97's World Series. It seemed like it was much gentler in those days. Also, I guess to some extent in the earlier days. I was doing a lot more sports betting, so I didn't play the tournaments. You know, I played a few big tournaments, and okay. I sat around, and it used to fall during the basketball playoffs, so I'd bet the playoffs and watch the games and the halftime, bet the half times and all of that stuff. And then and the play poker when you had the chance? Yeah, and play the cash games. Well, in those days, too, we were betting so much on a game that, you know, I'd have to finish second or third in a tournament to be equivalent to what I was betting, or our group was betting wow. on a basketball game. Nowadays, the tournaments are so huge, the prizes are so huge, it's for, you know, yeah. it's a whole different thing. And 
In those days, the cash games used to be where all the money was. You know, when, you, when people say, wow, Phil Helmut just got bracelet number 11, how wonderful that is, he's passed Doyle, you have to say to yourself, if Doyle had been after bracelets for all those years yeah. and played the smaller Taking field the time to play all the events instead of playing for cash, he'd have 25 bracelets and, you know, 500 caches Probably or something, true. you know, so it's a uh, it's You've got to keep it in perspective. World. Yeah. So you won a bracelet back in 95 in Chinese poker. That's a tournament they don't even have anymore. Well, how was that tournament structured? Why don't you, first of all, explain it. Maybe our viewers don't know exactly well, what Chinese poker is. Chinese poker is a variant of poker, which is really more of a card arrangement game than it is a poker game. Mm -hmm. You dealt 13 cards. You make it into three poker hands, a three-card hand and two five-card hands, and... Each hand has to beat the hand in front of it. Are so they you, all high hands? They're normally the way it's heard sta of the standard. Yeah. Right. You can like anything else in poker. It generates all kinds of variations. Spin-offs. So, but what, what's the tournament style? The tournament style was you played, you know, all high, okay. and you score zero, two, or four points. In other words, if you win two out of three positions, you get two points. Okay. If you win three out of three positions you get four points and if you split one position tie one position and split the other two it's zero so those were the basic results and then they kept raising the yeah. stakes <laughs> amazingly enough i did play doyle in the you finals. played doyle heads up yeah and yeah. howard lever was there at that final table too yeah, right i think yeah and, i mean doyle and i played till about six in the morning i mean we talked about grueling and yeah. by then the entire poker room the entire casino were virtually deserted, <laughs> except there was a pool player who was a friend of mine okay. who had made a bet on me against another pool player who was a friend of Doyle's. And my pool player friend kept cheering in this totally empty casino. I'd win a hand and he'd say, See, see, go see! And which would always steam Doyle up. And yeah. Doyle would say, Tell that guy to be quiet. You know, so that was a. Uh, but we played till four in the morning, and eventually I got lucky and won, and, and that was it. That Chinese poker bracelet has got to be treasured by Steve. I mean, it's got to be pretty cool to have a bracelet in an event that doesn't even exist anymore. Yeah, that's pretty unfortunate they don't have it anymore. I would totally play. I don't want to brag, but I'm kind of sweet at Chinese poker. Yeah, I would play too. World Series of Poker, we think you should reinstate the Chinese poker tournament. That's what Lizzie and Christy think. I'm sure they care. <laughs> Definitely. Now, today is day two of the Pot Limit Hold'em event. Um, it's a $2,000 buy-in and the chip leader going into today was James Henson. And a few of the pros who, who uh, made it into day two that started today are TJ Cloutier, Daniel Lahi, and De Devin Porter, but Devin Porter has unfortunately been eliminated already. And 599 entrants built a prize pool of just under $1.1 million. Now at the Rio today there are two tournaments that are playing their final tables, but only one of them is a world championship event. That's right, the final table of the $5,000 buy-in Omaha 8 or Better World Championship event is going on right now, and eight players remain. The chip leader going in was Italian poker player Massimo Renoud, also known as Max, and he still has the chip lead. Randy Jensen is the only professional at this table. He started off the final table in the middle of the chips, and he's still right around the middle of the pack. 280 entrants were in this tournament, and that built a prize pool of over $1.3 million. Now, the other gold bracelet that was awarded today goes to the champion of event number 35, a 1500 buy-in No Limit Hold'em tournament, and there are six players left at that final table. The chip leader going in was Ryan Young, and he now has a huge chip lead. He's been able to build that during final table play, and he has over $3 million in chips when no one else has even over $1 million, so he's doing pretty well. And Irishman Michael Trimby, he entered the final table in fourth chip position, but he is now the short stack, and he said, he told some players, I guess, regardless of what happens, he's going to get wasted tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like fun. Now, two pros that made, made it through over 2,500 players who are at that final table are John Esposito Jr. and Nam Lee. Now, the key to successful poker is pacing yourself, and no pro knows this better than Paul Wasica. He stopped by earlier today to talk to me about how he chooses which days to take off, and also to compare last year's World Series to this year's World Series. Paul, how has the World Series treated you so far this year? Um, you know, I came out and I thought uh, I would have a little more success out of the gates, um, just because I'd been on a streak uh, as of recently. But um, the first seven events, I didn't cash, and uh, it was getting pretty frustrating. I felt like I was playing pretty good poker for the most part, um, but uh, just not getting the right cards in the right spots, and uh, 
And then going into the heads up, um, that was uh, where I finally cashed. So. Yeah, you must have felt confident going into that. You just won the NBC Heads Up Championship. Yeah, I was really getting excited for that one. So actually, uh, I decided to take a week-long break and not play any events uh, the week before just to get my head right um, to make sure that uh, I was going in with the right frame of mind and all that. Because um, so, that was the, one of the events that uh, I've been looking forward to most. Um, that one, the main event, obviously, yeah. and the uh, uh, 5K shorthanded that's coming up uh, next week. And that's the next event you'll be playing in? Yeah. Um, that one is going to be, I think, next Thursday. And uh, so I think I'm just going to take some time off. And um, for me, the most important thing is making sure that I'm fired up for the tournaments. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of hard to do when you're playing, like, so many, you know, in a row. Yeah. And so um, if there's one that I really, really care about, then I usually take some time off right before that so that when I come back to the tables, I'm, like, really, really Excited hungry for it. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think, what is the main difference between the Rio this year and the Rio last year for the World Series <laughs> of Poker, obviously? Um, <clears throat> I'd say, um, I don't know. There's some things that they've done that I've liked and some things that uh, they've done that I obviously don't like. Um, what have you liked? We'll start with the positive. <clears throat> What I've liked is uh, I liked how they've they've tried to better the experience. Like they tried doing the the card switching the interface of the cards, mm -hmm. um, which obviously failed uh, tremendously. Did you but see the new cards? Uh, yeah, Did I played. Like I played for like two levels. No, I hated them. But <laughs> the fact that they tried, you know, that that really meant a lot. I think. They um, need for effort. Yeah, they got need for effort. Um, but uh, you know, and then they. Um, went out with the uh, cussing rule, like the F bomb rule. As long I thought as it's that, not that was directed. kind of a yeah, I thought that was kind of a ridiculous rule, you know, to have one cuss word um, where you get a penalty and then you could do say whatever you want outside of that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think that they are kind of listening to the players a little bit, um, but uh, they still got a long way to go. I think that if they got a few um, uh, pros on the board of directors that, you know, things would go a little Smooth bit more smoothly. Out. Yeah. You know, when you sign up you're usually waiting in line with some friends, mm -hmm. and uh, and they tend to put people that are signing up at the same time at the same table, and so you you end up sitting at a table full of like you know three or four people that are your really good friends that you don't want to knock out. Yeah. And you don't want you know it's just really frustrating. You'd rather be sat you know at different tables, and I mean it's easy to work your way around it. I mean when they got alternates instead of filtering you into all the empty seats, they wait till ten seats are empty, break a table, and then put all the alternates that were waiting in line together at the same table, and then they don't break that table. It's, it's pretty ridiculous in my opinion, but um, I don't know if they said that they thought that was the best way to do it. But Yeah, that doesn't seem know. like it makes very much sense to have yeah, friends so playing at the same table. It is pretty frustrating, um, especially when, I mean, so far I've played in uh, three events where I've been sat next to one of my good friends, and it's just it's really annoying considering there's like 1,500 people yeah, in this tournament. That's you know. true. So I heard you were involved in some prop bets. Why don't you tell us about one of them? Uh, yeah, there's one coming up. We're going to – I don't even know the details. I was just told <laughs> what's going to be going down. Well, who smoothed but, um, out the details? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my agent, Chris Porter, he uh, arranged for um, 10 guys to play um, on the Nintendo Wii, a game of bowling. And we're all going to put up $1,000, and uh, we're going to play for a, a seat in the main event. Do you think I can get in on that? I'm pretty good at Wii Bowling. Uh, well, if you're good at Wii Bowling, I don't know if I'll, I, I can work something out. But <laughs> had you told me I'd never played before, you know. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, I'm not good at maybe this prop anything. Some, maybe I'll have to get some <laughs> lessons or something. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, thanks for being here. Good luck next week in the $5,000 six-handed event. All right, and good thanks. luck in the rest of the time. Paul is certainly driven and has the right attitude. I'm sure we'll be seeing much more from him in the future. Yeah, he's been doing very well recently, and I'm sure that will continue. That's everything we have for you on this episode of Poker Night, but be sure to be back tomorrow. We'll be here with all the poker news from Las Vegas. Good night, everybody. Good night.